Good morning, everybody. Great to see you. I'm Phil. I'm on the staff team here at uh, Freedom Church, and this morning we're talking about the future. I don't know about you, but I am excited about the journey that we're on as a church. And uh, John Stuart Jones has been consistent in, uh, in reminding us that constant change is here to stay. And we are now on a pathway where there's some, some significant changes just around the corner. So, and yeah, whoop, indeed. Yeah. Whoop, indeed. <laughs> so, like, in the last couple of months, we've had, we've had a couple of major announcements uh, from the platform uh, about what's happening uh, for us as a church going into the future. Um, and what we're going to do is take the opportunity to explore those in more detail over the next couple of weeks. So if you're here for the first time, I'm joined here on stage by Andrew and Tim, uh, who are members of the senior leadership team. Um, and they have bravely, you might say foolishly, uh, volunteered uh, to be interviewed uh, by me. And we're going to do that this week and next week. Uh, just to delve into uh, the, the announcements that have been made recently. So they are, back in September, Andrew told us that we are making the move. We are moving in at the Freedom Center. And uh, I know that we're all keen to know what that process looks like. Um, and the other thing is that in October, uh, during our teaching series on the church, John told us uh, that he was handing on the role of senior pastor in January. Now, to some... That may have come as a, a surprise announcement, um, but I know that it's the result of many months of, of work um, and processing about what effective leadership transition looks like. Um, so, uh, so let's jump straight in, guys. Yes. Hello. Hello. Good. How are you? Hello. Good, good. All right. This is fun, eh? <laughs> <clears throat> I've not done it. I, I, I like this. Just Hi. call me Graham Norton. What's <laughs> up, Graham? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Um, it's the start of a new year, new, f new, new opportunities, things are new. For example, this month for the first time, I now used to need to use a nose hair trimmer. Praise the Lord. Thank you. So I wonder what's new for you this, this month. Um, uh, and we know that, um, we know that there's something... There's something new in terms of the shape of the leadership team uh, coming this month. So now John told us last week that we are the church, right? We are the church. You can't retire from the church. Uh, so tell us, what is John handing on? And what does that look like? Well, I, th I, I mean, you mentioned that um, these discussions have been taking place over months, have actually been taking place over a number of years. But along the way, that we've had a few... Um, I mean, someone decided to have a heart attack in the process, and, I thank you. Yeah. and, uh, and a few other hiccups along <laughs> the way, and so it's been, a, it's been something we, a, a, as a team, have kind of been talking about for, for some time, and, and w when, you, when you talk about John, uh, and you talk about passion, you have there in, in one individual a guy who has led with passion. Yeah through 37 years leading church and serving this island. <laughs> um, has served, have served the island, has served local church, has been passionate about discipleship. And uh, if, you were, if you were to cut uh, John in half, he would bleed local church, passion for the gospel, and, and wanting to see um, people... Uh, grow in their relationship um, with, with Jesus. But I think fundamentally, what we're going to be seeing happening, and we'll talk a, bit, a little bit later about um, uh, the service in a couple of weeks' time, but effectively, what, what will be happening for John, and, and obviously, therefore, the recognition for us as a church, is two, two things mainly. One is that uh, John's role is going to, to change primarily, well, firstly, in that as senior uh, lead pastor, he will be stepping aside of that. And effectively, if one can use the analogy which I know John has used, and I think it's hope, hope, helpful for us as a church, he's, he's handing on that baton of responsibility uh, to Tim and I um, to carry and to assume. Now, obviously, uh, John's style of leadership over many years is, you know, we, we've led together 
Um, but there's been a recognition uh, as for John within that uh, senior lead uh, pastoral role. So that's the, that's the f I would say that's the first um, responsibility that John is, is having. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that John carries in, in the senior leadership team um, is a real passion for the operation of church, strategic development. And, and so he uh, is handing on that aspect, um, too, of his role. Great stuff. So can you, uh, I realize uh, John has sat right here and, and, and could easily speak for himself, but I wonder if, um, just in, uh, in this context, whether you're able to say uh, what John is going to be doing and, and uh, yeah, like going into the future. Yeah. Well, I was really glad um, Andrew outlaid the impact that John's had and will continue to have. Um, over 37 years, and 23 for me, I moved here when I was 19 and just a, a sprite. Um, and, and John has been a, a father in the house. He, he, um, he has pastored and loved, and we've, ta we've talked about the deepest of things and spent a long time in rooms together praying for the heart of God for this church. And um, he continues to be that. He continues to be yeah. a father in the house. Mm. Uh, and it, it, developing from that, that John and Jen will be carrying um, the strategy and development of a pastoral team going forwards. We want to see legacy in every area. Uh, and the idea is to make sure that <coughs> as we go forwards, we're developing a strong pastoral approach to the church where we can look out for people, where we can love people well and see people discipled uh, in Jesus. So, so that's the nature of the role that John and Jen will be carrying together. That's awesome. I think if I can add to that, I mean, you know, um, as John, as John uh, uh, mentioned last week, he, he's not retiring uh, for, John, for John and Jen. Uh, w one of the things I did love about, um, if you remember, if you haven't seen it, check out the, um, the, the video cast from last week's message. But um, John, made reference to two or three books and, and one of the ones that he mentioned was was about finishing well <coughs> and I think this is a, a and he recognized a new season uh, in life for, for them as a couple having having led that, that you know he, he, although he said you know five years ago he retired from being a GP you can't retire from being part of the kingdom of God Amen. and when 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 Jesus resides in you uh, you you take that not just to the grave you take it to glory and so he will be bleeding Jesus uh, um, as he continues serving within, within this church. Yeah. And that would be part of his finishing well. It's not a, that he started, but that he, he, he and Jen will be finishing well just in a, in a different season of life. Mm. And uh, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff that they're going to be involved with going forwards. Yeah, yeah great stuff. Okay. Well, so John is laying down the... the the title of lead <coughs> pastor, handing on that baton to the two of you. Um, in organisations where you where you see the organisational structure, the tree with uh, with areas of responsibility and accountability, it's pretty it's pretty rare to see two people sharing the same role uh, right at the top, isn't it? Like, is there is there a precedent for that? How how can you share one position, guys? Well, I'm not saying it doesn't come without its challenges. Um, but I think, I mean, there's, I think there's, there's real um, biblical precedent, but also if we look, let's, let's move to the animal kingdom for a minute. Why not? Why not? <laughs> and, uh, We're going to visit Doral right here. And, uh, um, and, and, and an analogy, I think, which is really useful and, and is an analogy that's used several times throughout Scripture, and it's the analogy of the yoke where you've got, let's take oxen, um, without a yoke being applied to them to walk side by side, to, to learn to walk side by side, um, those animals can pretty much do um, uh, as they please. And really, that's something in, in part that we've kind of learned over, over a period of time, but I think in, in more recent months, spending more time getting to understand one another the, the, uh, and, and the way we, uh, we work together. There, there is a real intentionality about taking 
uh, the church forward, assuming the role of, of lead pastors, and actually by yoking ourselves together. What, 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 you know, in terms of what animals do, there's, there's that element of submission. By placing themselves in that yoke, there's a saying, I'm not going to go off and do this, I'm not going to go off and do that, but actually we're going to bring our strengths together and yoked together, um, we're going we're gonna to pull, we're going to lead, uh, and it's going to be possible uh, because of, the, of the, um, the coming together. Yeah. I, I think in that as well, um, you know, one of, the, one of the most beautiful things when you're leading something, I'm sorry, that, that may have been me. Po- By the way, it's not the first time I've been described as an ox. Um, <coughs> um, but um, w- when, you, when, you, when you make a decision to stand together, uh, as we have done for years and years in team, so in a sense there's nothing different to that for us, but there is an intentionality about this yoking that's about, it's about potentiation. So when those two oxen are brought together, I think it's times four the capability, the possibility, the forward momentum, uh, what they're able to overturn and, and achieve. There's an accountability. Um, there's, there's, there's a standing together and holding one another in to the purposes of God, which I think is, is superbly important um, and, and across team, but to be modeled between the two of us as well. Uh, there's a mutual support. One of the most beautiful things in leadership is where you feel like you own something with someone else. And one of the most difficult things about leadership is feeling like you're doing everything yourself and trying to generate momentum. And uh, interesting, in Mark, Mark Arles gave a prophecy in July, in June, July time. Um, and we've been reflecting and praying and meditating on that as well in this last few weeks. And there's so much in it which we would love you to read and love you to meditate on. And part of that is this season of participation that we're coming into. And so, and so I would personally love to see, as we're doing here, uh, an explosion of participation among us and shared ownership in the different things that we're doing as a church. Um, because that is a, an encouraging thing mm. when you're leading, isn't it? Yeah. I, I think, I think it, it, in many respects, if, if I'm honest, <laughs> it would be easier for either of us to, to take lead responsibility by ourselves at one level. For sure. However, um, when, when you watch a farmer... Um, and if, if, you've never, if you've never watched it, I mean, I grew up on a farm and had some experience of, of this, um, although horses and that moved on to tractors very quickly. Um, but horses, and, uh, and, and you see it in horses, you see it with oxen, but uh, still across many parts of the world, still very much in use today. You see the skill of the farmer managing the oxen that are yoked together. Yeah. And the realization that that farmer is able to put to work these two ind- individuals, these two oxen, to a much greater benefit yeah. than if they were isolated and working in silos. Fantastic. And I think for us, you know, and, and I'm not trying to make something that isn't there in Scripture. I think for us there is a very much a precedent here that, that we recognize that, that we're, we're, we're different individuals, but actually this yoking together and, and, and seeking God's leading and saying where, where, where he calls us to go. We want to see the skill of, of God bringing the strengths that we have and putting them for the greatest benefit of the church. Yeah. Not for us, it's for the benefit of the church and of course then for community. That's, it. That's great. I mean, you, you, you mentioned your differences. Now, I, I mean, I've worked closely alongside both of you guys for five years now. Um, you've got plenty in common when it comes to computers, for example. <laughs> it, it would be unfair of me to use the words grossly incompetent. <laughs> but you certainly share, for example, the wonder of how email might work. You know, there's, there's you know... Um, Not harsh. Uh, and, and you also <laughs> share in common uh, an incredible <coughs> passion for the church, which is inspiring to us. Um, but but, it's, uh, but it's, it's, it's clear to me, it's <laughs> evident to me that you, your brains work 
in, in, in some significantly different ways. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you anticipate butting heads at all? Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're geared up for it. Um, we, in fact, right, obviously we've worked together for, for like 11 years. Well, we sat on a plane, didn't we? Yeah. Um, maybe 14. 13, 14 years ago. Uh, and w we were talking about the amalgamation of, free, uh, of, uh, of JCC and, uh, and of Abundant Life. And we were, we were talking about what the possibilities were of being yoked, of being joined together. And that was significant. And we've, we've had this time now working together, I believe, a, a preparation time. And now there's this participation time mm. where we're... And, and, and over that journey, we've actually seen a few occasions where we've butted heads, and a couple of times publicly. Um, so there was one brilliant one. I call it Marquee Gate. Um, we, <coughs> we, had, we had done jam on the grass for the first time. So we'd basically done uh, an, an evening of, of um, celebration with GCSE students down at the seafront. Hundreds of young people. We were partying. I was, I was in the music team. I was, I was speaking. Andrew was doing loads of logistics stuff. And we were, we were both running hard all day long from like six in the morning. And it was tiring. And it was 12 at night when we were packing away. And we were all gathered around this marquee. And, uh, and uh, we were putting the stuff away. And I don't know if you've done the marquee ever. If you haven't, it's, it's, uh, it's, an, it's a well-oiled machine if it's done correctly. And Andrew knows every butterfly nut on that thing. Okay, And, and we were putting this thing away. And I was, I was shaking the canvas with a couple of other guys because it was wet and it was just hilarious to me. Um, and, and, and there's something in me that just wants everyone to enjoy the ride. <laughs> so we were kind of having fun. And then Andrew was like, there's something in Andrew that, that wants to make sure that the next people to take that marquee out, it's a blessing to them because we've put it away properly. And so... These are both great emphases, aren't they? <laughs> you know, there's the collaboration, and then there's the, there's the, there's the, uh, the, the sense of doing things well. <coughs> both great things. But if you get them in the wrong spot when you're tired, and there's a conflict of interest, you might have a little moment where 30 people who are with you sitting down feel really awkward, <laughs> right? And, and we had one of those, a take-me-aside moment. I, I think Dave was there. Were you there, Dave? Dave's nodding away. And th there was this palpable sense of, whoa, what's going on here? And we, so we packed everything away. We went back to the center. We, we, we packed everything away, and the tension was still felt. And then we sat in a van together, and we just prayed and talked through what had happened. And the beauty of it was the recognition that if we can get over the stuff that grates, there's so much potential in the stuff that's good. Mm. And it's the same with everything. It's the same with marriage. I'm, I'm reticent to go too far into that analogy in this occasion. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> darling. Um, <clears throat> but but it's, it's the same in marriage. There are times at which you just disagree. Unless you're just, mm, all the time. There are times at which you disagree. But if you learn to understand one another's strengths, understand one another's foibles and weaknesses, mm -hmm. that you can actually encourage, support, and develop one another as you work through these speed bumps or these locked horn moments, mm -hmm. um, which we've definitely shared. And I'm sure we will have some going forward. But there's a deep submission to Jesus and to relationship. I, I, I mean, I don't think um, this is the kind of news to... to, to people here in terms of that were quite different mm. um but I, I, it's funny because i remember running three-legged race at school and uh, i used to run it with one particular guy uh, at, at th this was all throughout primary we didn't we didn't do such trivial things in secondary school but throughout primary school and the three-legged race and this particular guy and i um we Outside of the three-legged race, we didn't actually do much together. We were just very different. But the very first time we did it, we kind of, both being fairly competitive, we thought, right, we, we're going to do this. If we're going to do this, we're going to do it properly. 
And so we developed a strategy between us as to how we were going to run this three-legged race. And we spoke, and we, we, would, we would run down that 100-meter stretch, and we shouted our commands to one another. And no kidding, annually, every year, we won that three-legged race by a country mile. And the reason was, was, was because we, although we were so different, we took, we, we worked on a strategy of how we could bring our differences together and yet how we could run in real synchronicity. Mm -hmm. And it was great. And I, and I think, you know, I'm not, again, I think recognizing the differences between us it, it, uh, and, and, and focusing on what we can bring, we, we see that actually for the benefit of the church, this is a great thing. And so we're really concentrating on working on those things that, that God has really gifted us with and how we can uh, have a, a synchronicity to that for the benefit of, of, of the church going forwards. So, so speak into that for us then in <coughs> terms of the mission of the church. How do, you, how do you see those things working together? Well, you know, John, um, for years as well, has said into our team, look, every man's a sermon. And what, whatever you preach on, whatever you speak on, that sermon kind of comes out of, of you. And um, our mission as a church is, is what? To know Christ and make him known. So they, therein you have a, a paradox, but a synchronicity, don't you? You've got to know Christ and make him known. There's two different emphases to the same relationship, two different purposes but perfect um, synchronization. And, um, and we feel like we potentially have, we're, we're both men of a sermon, and, and mine would be Jesus is pouring into you all the time, not so that you can hold on to it, but so that you can do what he's called you to do. And, and Andrew's would be like, we, as Christians, we are called to do what God has called us to do and to have faith to be in action, in everything that we do. And so we, we carry those things in tension and together, but they seem to articulate the know Christ and make him known mission statement of the church. Would you agree with that? No, I, I agree. I think it, it's... Uh, but, but to be fair, it, it's only in more recent years that I've, that's, re that's <coughs> become much more apparent to me, and maybe that, you know, maybe that, that should have been obvious in, in my own thinking uh, a lot longer um, and, you know, if I can say, um, you know, part of my journey, I've pastored church for um, like nearly 20 years, 19, 19 years. And if I'm being really honest, um, it's, a, it's a wrestle I've had for the entire 19 years. And, uh, you know, I could, <laughs> there are parts of that time I could easily just walk away. Um, and I, to, to still to this day, I feel at times, um, well, th there's better people at doing this than me. And, but, you know, along that journey, John and Tim and, uh, and other, other people who, who know me well in, in, within the church have been my greatest advocates in that and said, look, we believe in you. We see you're different. It doesn't have to look all the same. And, um, and, and you know, so I, I bring that sense of vulnerability to the to the table, but and it's been a wrestle. But every time over all of those years, kind of looking back, and it's like God, I I want to I want to get out here. And then you have got these people following, and it's like, oh, for goodness' sake, <laughs> well, we better carry on. And then someone will put put their arm around my shoulder and say, look, it'll be all right. You know, sometimes I I kind of feel I need that. It's a bit like. Um, so that's just me being a little bit uh, vulnerable, but that's that's kind of ri that's real. It's I I I I I just don't feel I have it often. Mm. Yeah, that's good. So there's a sense then of being stronger together, um, and also recognizing that <coughs> that your differences are, are what allows you to to fill in the gaps for one another. Is that yeah. fair to say? Yeah. yeah, and stand with one another. The same sense of vulnerability from me, like I'm so. I'm so aware that sometimes, you know, I can be I can be up here in ideas and thinking and so so like inconsistent in a sense of just I'm like I'm into this and then I'm into it. I'm like the, the squirrel with the cookie on um on over the hedge. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Oh cookie. Um and and there's there's a sense of being yoked 
um, that, that actually pulls us together in our strengths and in our weaknesses, where we hold one another as well. Yeah. And not back to the marriage analogy on that. Um, <laughs> speaking of weaknesses, um, the, uh, the other part of John's role that you said that he was handing over was the strategic and operational lead of the organization. Now, I use the word organization advisedly because... When it comes to aspects of personality you guys might lack, organization might sometimes be considered one of those. Answer me this. Are you taking on the organizational lead of the church? And if so, how soon before the whole thing falls apart? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think, I think it, we love team. in answer to the first question, no. <laughs> I, we're not taking on the organizational lead. Um, I mean, what, what will look different, you know, just um, what we said about the other part of John's role that will be different as part, previously as part of the senior leadership team. Going forward, we'll be forming a new leadership team of which Tim and I will be a part of. And uh, um, Stuart Stables, who has been an amazing uh, a godsend, firstly, I think, to, to John, because they, they, they think very similar around <laughs> stuff, the whole organizational side, strategy, and all of that, which has been a huge benefit. I mean, I cannot, I cannot um, put my, uh, I, I cannot give thanks more highly for, for, for people like Stuart, who's, who's come alongside of, of John, and of course, as us as a team. Um, and going forward, we're going to be developing that the that side of, the, of the, the 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 wider team in terms of organisationally for the church. Otherwise, it, it will. You're right. It'll be a cra crane trash. A crane trash. Crane, crane trash. <laughs> crane uh. <laughs> so Stu's role of <laughs> operational director isn't going away. That is that is something that he's he's continued to grow in. Yeah, yeah. He's right in there at the moment. He's been walking along jo with John for some time. In that, and he's continuing to walk with us, and and as we look to develop that team, and and just employ every skill and facet of leadership that we that we need to for the future of the church, because mm. uh, it's about God releasing people in their calling. It's not about us. Yeah. Great. Um, we're nearly out of time. There's two more questions I want to um, to get in. The first is that. Uh, Laura is trying to persuade me to take down the Christmas decorations, which means two things. It means she doesn't share my passion to have them up all year round. <laughs> and two, that means it's January. Um, and January was the, the, the time scale that we said where this leadership transition was happening. So can you tell us uh, uh, when, when we can expect to see the change? Okay, well, um, a couple of important things. The 26th of January is going to be an important time for us uh, 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 as a church. Um, we're calling that Transition Sunday, and uh, we're going we're gonna to celebrate together a, as a church, and we're going to honor as a church too. And we've got um, a couple of special guests going to be with us, Mark Isles who, and um, Nick Harding, who have been friends of, of this church for many, many years and within that, you know, the Bible talks about giving honor where honor is due. Um, that opportunity on the 26th is going to be an opportunity for us as a church to honor John and Jen, to, to say thank <laughs> you for those 37 years and to, 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 to pray, pray with them. And as I say, it's not, a, it's not a retirement service. It's an opportunity where they're handing over that baton of responsibility uh, for the leadership and the visionary leadership um, of, of, of the church. And also on the 26th will be an opportunity to pray for Tim and I as we assume that leadership role uh, going forwards. I think there's anything That's more great. to say on no. that? Bang on. Yeah, great. Um, and, and so uh, the other thing I, I want you to touch on really briefly is, is um, uh, just about the move. We'll, we'll chat in more detail next week where we'll pick this up again um, about what's coming up this year. Um, uh, but briefly, just looking beyond the 26th of January, can you tell us what the next step is in terms of, of the move? Yeah. Do you want me to do that? Okay. So, um, so we've got a few things that we're going to be laying out next week in much more detail. 
Um, but it's, it's really important to mention that um, we've, we've talked for months now about a stepping stone along the way to that move. We want to be intentional about moving towards it. And one of the, the stepping stones we're going to be putting into place uh, is moving the time of the Freedom Center campus um, from 6.30... Uh, from, sorry, 11.30 in the morning till 6.30 in the evening. And what we want to do is start to galvanize the church around that time and build towards uh, the move where we can resource and empower that as a, an opportunity to build a worshiping community down at Freedom Center. Anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I, I say, I, I mean, <coughs> Phil, you've alluded to that in terms of we'll, we're going to fill out some of the detail of, of, of mm. some of that, that move going forwards. Um, I think uh, I, I want to I read because I think some of these words from um, the, the prophecy that Mark shared with us, um, although God gave it to him in, in June, he shared it with us in September, which if you remember, church, um, some of the things uh, around the stuff that we shared, it came to for us as a leadership, as a really confirmatory word. Mm. And which in terms of the stuff that we had already been processing, talking about, agreed upon. And that was super exciting. And if you remember when we shared the, the talk about going down, um, rather than Freedom Center being a project any longer, it was going to be our home and so forth. But obviously, when we start thinking about some of the details, um, there's a lot to do. Um, but I just want to remind us as a, of, of a couple of the things that Mark shared within that prophecy. He said, I have a sense that we're moving into a completely new season for the church in the very near future. And the heading for this prophetic wor word, which I think sums it up nicely, is a game of two halves. That is frequently a reference to a football game where the first half of the football game is completely different to the second half. And that this is the emphasis that I want to bring. I want to bring a word that the next season that the church is going into is very, very different to the season that we have had previously. And as a result, I believe God wants to speak into that and give you some clarity. Um, it's going to be, a, uh, he says that there's going to be a need for greater level of flexibility within the church and in the leadership. And that our positive response as leaders and as the church is, is super important um, within that. Um, so I, 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 you know, there's a lot of, 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 in a sense, a certain amount of unknowns. But in terms of what, what we do know is that as, as we are transitioning <coughs> as part of that interim stage, the, the one of the um, immediate steps will be the change of the service down at Freedom Center, and we'll give some more detail around that um, next week. Yeah. Is there any more to say on that? I don't think there is. I think, uh, I think we're good. Great stuff. Well, thank you for sharing so clearly and honestly with us. I wonder if we can thank Tim and Andrew. As I say, I will be picking this up again next week. We're going to carry on with this. Um, if, if you have unanswered questions... Um, about the leadership transition or about the move to the Freedom Center. We'll obviously talk about um, the move uh, a, a lot more next week, but I'd like to invite you to email them in to themove at freedomchurch.je and we'll endeavor to make sure that your questions are covered um, just so that you're, uh, you feel like you're, you're able to be clear and able to be uh, uh, heard and answered on those things. Is that okay? Great stuff. Okay, and so finally, just to say, as the band come back on, I wonder, guys, if um, if you'd be able to uh, just step forward, and um, I wonder if you'd lead us in prayer. Uh, tell us how we can respond in faith um, just now to, to what it is that God's doing. Yeah, great. Absolutely. Um, can we stand, actually? Would that be okay? <coughs> There's a very real sense in which anything that God is calling us to do starts in your heart. And when John was speaking last week about vision, he was saying, what is your vision? If you wake up and you have no purpose, then it's very hard for you to engage with what God's calling you to do in a bigger organizational setting or in a church setting. We want to we spend this time as we worship and pray and ask that God plants in your heart clarity for your uh, vision at this time. And 
our belief in that is that every person in this room is here for such a time as this. And as we step into what God has called us to do, that is merely an amalgam of all the things that God has called you to be and to do. It's an amalgam of those things. Imagine the potential of 400 people waking up knowing exactly what God has laid on them for such a time as this. There's one final word in that from me, and that's a guy called Arthur Wallace, um, a a real father in the church, um, once said, find what God is doing and throw yourself into it feet first. And I want to encourage you this morning as you hear from God to step into all that he's calling out of you. Can we just close our eyes and maybe Andrew would just pray for us as we do that. Father, we pray that we would catch your heart. We'd begin taking incremental steps. And perhaps in, it's into a season that we is completely unfamiliar for us, that you'll be leading us to do things and to try things that we never thought possible. Father, I thank you that this new year will be an opportunity for exploration, that you are going to lead us. There are, there are already going to be huge changes. But Lord, as we, as we trust you, that you haven't brought us to this point to then leave us at the edge of the Jordan or or the Red Sea, but you've brought us to this point to lead us into the next season. Each of us taking up new opportunities. So Lord, I pray that we would find those things. We would know what you're calling us to do in the 2020s. We would sense and know that for us as a church. And we would know our part to play in the church. And Lord, we pray this morning too. And I ask church that you continue to pray too. We, we communicated at the end of November that we were, as the result of some of the works that had been going on at Freedom's Center, some of the difficulties that had ensued from that. Lord, I, 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 I ask you, church, to continue to pray, particularly this week, which is a crucial week for us in some of the uh, legal journey that we're on. So, Father, we thank you and we commit ourselves at all of these points, knowing that you have us, you hold us, and you're leading us. Thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen.